Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do my March wrap up of the books that I read in March. So hey P. <laughs> hey y'all. <laughs> He's here with me today as usual. But anyway, so, so I'm filming this kind of as an intro to the video. Um, Hey, Nut, he's rubbing up against this. <laughs> I'm filming this as like an intro to the video because I already filmed most of this video. So the first part you'll see are books that I read, maybe first few in March where I was outside. It was such a beautiful day. So I wanted to film outside. So anytime that it's really nice outside, I'd really like to do that as well going forward because it's always great atmosphere for videos. But um, I did film that, so that'll be next. And then I have a portion, another portion that was a little bit later in March inside and then there'll be a portion at the end where I talk about my final book that I read this month. So PS y'all I hit a hundred subscribers on this channel so I was so excited. So thank you all for commenting, subscribing, liking. If you're watching this and you've not subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you want to be here on the channel it's so much fun. I really enjoy making these videos so just want to thank you all for that as well. What I want to say. <laughs> like I'm always I'm like it's the end of the week I don't know I don't even know where I'm at that's what I always tell people I don't even know where I'm at um I had a really great reading month overall I need to probably look and see how many books that I read where's my iPad hold on okay <laughs> so this month in March I you know as I mentioned in my TBR video I had a really great reading month normally I don't even read this much but I guess because I have this channel it's been really fun reading and I really enjoy sharing that with you all. So did a couple vlogs and first time. So that's kind of fun. I read eight books and most of them were on my TBR. I think I was going to read Codename Verity and I did not read that. And Meet Me in the Margins was on my TBR and I did not read that as well. So that's going, I don't know about Codename Verity. I just wasn't in the mood for it. So I don't even know when I'll get to that or if I will. But Meet Me in the Margins, I have moved to April. So we'll see if I get that read. I don't know. If not, it'll go to May. You know how that goes. A lot of times I've been a mood reader in the past. I've not really done like, okay, I'm going to read this every month. So I felt pretty good about getting most of those read that I said I was going to my TBR for March. And I read a whole series this month. So you'll hear about that next. So yeah, I mean, I DNF one book. Y'all have seen me talk about that already. And that'll be in this book, as this review as well. Or video, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, I guess without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into this next part of the video where I talk about the books that I read in March. Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the books that I've read so far in March. I've read almost three books. I'm almost done with Mere Christianity. Really enjoying it. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But um, these two right here five star reads. Terry Blackstock, If I Run, and The Librarian of Boone's Hollow by Kim Vogel Sawyer. This, these were just wonderful. <laughs> like, I'm just like gushing about these. I want to tell everybody about these. So, I keep looking over here. I need to be looking at the camera. Okay. <laughs> so, like I said, both of these are five star reads. I finished them this week. I finished this one in about two or three days. Probably three days. This one was in like two or three days as well. And just wonderful. So first I'll talk about If I Run by Terry Blackstock. This is about a girl. It's a mystery. And I guess I felt, always felt like I wasn't a mystery person, but I guess with this, I mean, maybe I'm more of a Christi Christian mystery person at this point, because in the past when I read mystery, I just felt like it wasn't my thing. Maybe it was too graphic or whatever, too dark. But with this, it's a Christian mystery and I loved it. It was so good. A girl named Casey, her DNA is all over the crime scene. She comes in, finds her friend murdered, and she flees the scene. So, of course, they're going, of course, honey, they're going to think you did it. Your DNA is all over the crime scene. They're going to think you're the, the one who did it. But she flees the crime scene. She's kind of got like this dark past where her father would, had committed suicide, but of course, she doesn't think it's a suicide. So, there's all this craziness about that as well and you don't really know the story there and you're trying to figure that story out as you go so throughout that situation she doesn't trust the police so when she finds her friend murdered she immediately just flees and freaks out and starts going on the run the title hits the title if i run so casey basically assumes a whole new identity so she's on this bus meets this really sweet lady 
and they miss lucy and they end up going to shady grove georgia she's basically starting over in this new town she's got a job changed her appearance cut her hair dyed her hair all this stuff and so she's um working at this little phone store and then there's some kind of side mystery that she ends up kind of getting in the middle of with someone who's missing and so trying to figure out what's happened there um that's someone very important to miss lucy so that's that's i really enjoyed that aspect this is told in dual perspective. So you've got Casey's perspective, and then it switches to Dylan's perspective. Dylan is the guy, he's a veteran who is hired. He's not part of the police, but he's hired and he works with the police a little bit to try to find Casey. And they really want to be able to find her. And so they're, they're, they're on this hunt to find Casey. Well, as Dylan is trying to find Casey, he starts piecing the truth of what really happened. And you start learning more about what really happened. and. I really enjoyed that back and forth where you can kind of see where she's at, her journey, and then see his thoughts as well and everything kind of coming together in the middle to the end. So yeah, this was a five star read. Like I said, it was wonderful. It just had such a great suspense and mystery and it had good Christian faith content in it as well. And so everything about it, I just loved. Like the characters really gripped me. I wanted to know, just kept wanting to know more. You're kind of on the edge of your seat. So this was my first read by Terry Blackstock and I definitely will be picking up the next book two and three to kind of figure out what happens. Cause this ends and you really don't know what the main what's happened in the whole out of the whole plot you still don't know so you have to pick up two and three it's going to make you want to pick up two and three completely so i highly recommend this okay so the librarian of boone's hollow by kim vogel sawyer five stars y'all this i don't know if i like which one i like better this one or if i run but they were both just so good so like i said in my march tbr i found out about this book from Lindsay from the blog books for christian girls and she loved this book it was like her five star read for 2020 she loved it made a whole separate video about it and that video made me buy this immediately and i i bought it pretty much as soon as she put that video up but i still hadn't read it so i was like i want to read this now I'm really interested in it and boy what did it not disappoint it was wonderful well, this is set in the 1930s in the great depression addie is a girl that's at college and she soon finds out that that her father pretty much lost his job and Heather don't have a home anymore. And so her tuition's not being paid. And so throughout that, she's having to find a job really quickly. And so she ends up finding a job delivering. She loves the library. She already has like a part-time job at the library. So she ends up being able to find a job in Boone's Hollow in Kentucky where she can deliver books to people by horseback, um, coal mining families that need books by horseback. So she goes to this new town, she's living there, she's trying to figure out what, you know, what she's gonna do. And, and the whole reason that I loved Addie so much is she was so driven to help her family. She has adoptive parents, and so they've done so much for her. She loves them, she wants to help them. They're struggling, they don't have any money. And so she just thinks, I'm gonna get this job and I'm gonna help them. And I just love that about her. She is always this great character who cares about others. She's the perfect example in this story of how to treat others because that's a, a value that her family has instilled in her. Addie is not well received in the community because she decides that she's gonna live with this lady named Nanny Faye. And they think that Nanny Faye is a witch. And of course she's not, but they just, because she uses herbal medicine and the person she was married to was part Cherokee and all this crazy stuff, they think she's a witch and they don't like Nanny Faye. And because, because Addie goes and, and is living with Nanny Faye, they don't like her and they don't want to take any books from her and it's just crazy. So she can't even really do her new job because these people are against Nanny Faye and they treat her the same way. And that was just crazy to me. But anyway, this, I guess I should go ahead and say this follows four perspectives, Addie, Emmett, Nanny Faye, and Bettina. And so at first when I started kind of going back and forth, I'm having a really hard time myself with multiple perspectives. I'm like trying to wrap it around in my head at first, but once I got going, it was just wonderful to kind of see it back and forth. And I feel like if you didn't have Bettina's perspective, you really wouldn't have felt this the way you did for her. So, um, but I, I'm just like all over the place with this. <laughs> so, so Addie, like I said, she's this wonderful girl. She's just a prime example of how you give others grace, no matter what they're doing and love like Jesus. And so that's a prime focus in this book. Emmett. Emmett's a character that I really liked. I felt like he was just such a good guy and he cared about other people and he, and he was just trying to find a job kind of like Addie. And this whole story is like, you know, there's so much surrounding the Great Depression in this story. So I really like historical fiction and with this having Christian faith content in it as well, that was perfect. So 
Um, but Emmett, like I said, he's just trying to find a job. Eventually ends up working with them at the library. This crazy situation with Bettina. Bettina is basically needing love. And so she, her father is abusive. There is some descriptions about um, where like her father would grab her wrist and she'd have like bruises and things like that from abuse from him. And she has a abusive father. She's just trying to get out of that situation. And so that's why I say, if you didn't have her perspective, you probably wouldn't feel so concerned or feel sorry for her as much because she said a lot of ugly things throughout the story about Addie, about Emmett, like when he would not show her the affection that she wanted or thought she should be getting or Nanny Faye even like treating her really bad. She, she just was using all of that against those people that was close to her and coming her new or new coming into her life because of the situation she was dealing with in her own family. So, you know, if you didn't see that and her backstory, you wouldn't have felt that. So I'm glad the author put her perspective in this so that you could feel that for her. Now I'm editing this video and realize I didn't even talk about the romance. <laughs> I mean, I'm all over the place. I guess I'm still trying to get used to how to like film reviews, but anyway. Yeah, P.S. I guess we're just gonna say this is a P.S. There was just a cute little romance in this. Like Addie and Emmett, cute little couple, so. But I'm like, review I'm like watching this back and I'm like, I didn't even say there was a romance in this story. I need to do better. <laughs> I'm so scatterbrained. Anyway, back to so, the video. Like I said, this is a very character driven story. Um, basically, they're just like trying to make the community better by delivering these books to people in the families. There's a lot of different projects that she's assigned to at the library that she's working for. So she ends up being able to do like scrapbooking and magazines and writing and all these different things. That's really great. But there's, like I said, there's all this conflict because of Bettina and, and Nanny Faye. And people just don't like Addie because she lives with Nanny Faye. And so, I love Nanny Faye. Let's talk about her for a minute. Honestly, she might be my favorite in this story. I don't know. Between her and Addie, I just don't know. She's just like that good grandma. She makes like blueberry jam. Like all the good things that you <laughs> love about your grandma. She just has those vibes. Um, she's so sweet. People like... People don't know her, so they just, like, they judge her for all these crazy reasons, like I mentioned. And so, they're not really real reasons. But she's a, truly a good Christian woman. And you start at the, you end, at the end is when you, kind of the middle to the end is when you really start learning about her story. And it just really pulls at your heartstrings for her. I feel like we all need a Nanny Faye in our life. So, she's wonderful. And just to see how Nanny Faye was, like, it didn't matter Similar to Addie, people treated her mean and everything. She didn't have a friend in the world, but she was still a good Christian person and was just faithful to the Lord. And and then like everything at the end was just like, I was like, oh my gosh, she's just so sweet. So <laughs> I don't know, I'm just like almost fangirling about this. I just love this story. It was so sweet. So I've talked enough about this. I don't really have much else to say other than read this book. I think I saw that Kim Vogel Sawyer actually Lindsay had shared on her story the, the new cover for the next book in this series. So I didn't know this was going to be like a series or anything, but um, Return to Boone's Hollow or something. I don't remember what it said. I, I'm going to find it right now. Yep. 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 Return to Boone's Hollow. I don't even know if you can see that out here because I mean, it's on my iPad, but probably not. It's all sunny and everything. But Return to Boone's Hollow. I'm here for that. I cannot wait for that to come out. I don't even think there's a date. There's just got a cover, but it's beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah. Five stars. Beautiful book. Read it. I've talked so much about this. This video is going to be so long. I don't even know. <laughs> I've only read two books of my, like, eight or nine that I want to read for the month. But, um, but yeah. So, I'm also almost done with Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. This was something that I'm really wanting to finish this month. So I went ahead and just picked it up. It was It's a short read, but you kind of have to pay really close attention because there's a lot going on. This is very philosophical. Um, sorry if y'all hear like noise back here. My neighbors are like building on their back deck. So you probably hear it. But anyway, at least the wind's not blowing like crazy. But anyway, so there's this really philosophical and the theological. There's a lot of um, great information in here about faith. I feel like this is a book that would strengthen your faith, at least for me, um, and help you. Like if you have somebody that is not really in faith or a believer of any kind and they try to combat you a lot this has like a, a lot of good information that can help you in those situations like c.s lewis kind of goes back and forth talking about different aspects of faith and christianity and it's, it's pretty much got everything in this 
that you know from like different points of view is how it starts out it talks about all these different points of view and people and um and then morality and law and all this all the foundation points of christianity so that's really all i have to say about it i think i'm probably going to rate this four stars um it's really good read i think that c.s lewis writes really well of course um first c.s lewis book that I have I will have read by him so I do have um Letters to Malcolm that I picked up that I'll probably pick up in the next couple months the Chronicles of Narnia I did buy as y'all saw so I'm excited about those so um like I said I've only got maybe like 50 pages left but I can already tell y'all even when I finish it this is going to be a four star read really good I had a hard time picking it up so I think that's why I'm not really saying five stars because I struggled to kind of get through some parts but it, of course it reads more like a theologian theologian's textbook right so you do have to kind of pay more attention it's not like one of those fiction books or anything like that so but it's really great non-fiction for you to kind of get your feet wet and understand more about christianity and your faith and i think it will help strengthen people's faith as well so yeah glad i picked this up excited to pick up more by c.s lewis four stars so after I finished the last 50 pages in that book, I've got this stack of books here for my TBR that I got to pick from. I don't know. I kind of want to go ahead and read my middle grade book for this month, Willow of the Wood. So I'm pretty sure that's what I'll pick up next. You'll see in the next little part. I just want to go ahead and film these, film this because I, I honestly filmed the review for If I Run and I lost the footage. So I'm like, I've got to get this out because my mind, uh -uh, I ain't going to remember at the end of March <laughs> what I want to say. So, um... Willow of the Wood, like I said, I'm probably going to pick this up after Mere Christianity. And that'll be like my middle grade book that I read. Um, yeah, so that's all I'm going to talk about today. And the next part of this video, you'll see after I finish some of these books. Hey, y'all. So it is March 19th. And the last I saw you, I filmed, I think I was talking about Mere Christianity. And so I did finish that. And that was, like I said, it was a four-star read for me. Loved it. So um, first C.S. Lewis book, it was wonderful. So... Since then, it is March 19th, and I don't remember what day that was that I found that, but it was outside, and it was just beautiful. But today, we're here in my little room with my little shelf, and I'm going to talk to you about some more of the books that I've read this month. Um, just feel like I've read several books since then, and I want to kind of get my thoughts out just to kind of talk to you all about those books. So, I'm going to have to go to my Goodreads because I can't remember what all I've read. <laughs> and I probably will look down at some of my notes here and there when I talk to you all about the books I've read because... It's been a wild ride, <laughs> and it's like 10.51 at night on Saturday. So, yeah, I've got some tea, and we're just here. I'm just here for it. So, I want to get these out and filmed. So, um, I've read 18 books this year out of 40 that I have for my yearly goal. So, that's great. We're rolling right along with everything. So, okay, so I have read one, two, three, four, five books since I talked to you all last after reading Mere Christianity. So, the first book I'll talk about, and actually, I read 60% of this. So, I've read four books in full, and 60% of this next book I'm about to talk to you about, you all saw my vlog. I DNF this book. It's the first book I've ever really DNF'd. I've never really DNF books. It's just like something that I've never really had to do I guess I just <laughs> but I mean like I might like put it down after I read like 10 pages or something but when I'm 60% in a book I've never done that so, so I got those to talk about today and in those books in those books the first one I DNF'd Willow of the Wood by Robert Beatty I won't spend a lot of time on this but basically I didn't really like some of the content in this for a middle grade book didn't think it was appropriate you know, I, I am pretty desensitized to content, but just from a Christian perspective, when I think about uh, this book from a middle grade side, I don't think it is appropriate. And I did not like some of the themes in this book. Check my vlog out for more. I'll link it below or in the card or whatever you're supposed to do. Um, I guess the card. I don't know if that works. And like I said, didn't really like it. It's 60% in. I did kind of want to know and I actually never even really flipped to the end. I never even figured out what happened because I just didn't care anymore at that point. Like when the stuff was getting kind of really weird. I don't know. Didn't like it. It was weird. No. So I ain't going to talk more about that because I don't care. And this video is already going to be really long. Like the first part of that was like 15 minutes from before. So we just need to talk about something else. So on to a better book. 
I found that was a five star favorite of the whole year is Dust by Kara Swanson. Y'all, I was loving this. I was loving this. It was in that book. <laughs> Sorry, I can't animate it. I've had this tea and I'm fired up at 11 o'clock on Saturday. So, I was loving this. Literally, five stars. This was just so great. I can't even like formulate my thoughts about it. I, I've already got the second book on audio. I bought it on my Audible. I had a, I had a few credits and I've already bought it. So maybe I'll finish it this month too. I don't know. But um, I'm gonna have to pull up my review because my mind ain't gonna take it right now with thoughts. My review basically says it all. But so this was a wild ride. They follow two perspectives. You've got Peter Pan's perspective and then you've got Claire's perspective. Claire's brother is basically missing named Connor. And he has basically went to see Peter Pan in Neverland and he leaves a note for Claire and Claire finds out that he's in London and she goes to London to find her brother. So you follow the perspective of, like I said, Peter Pan himself and then Claire. And they end up meeting up, of course, and everything kind of takes off from there. So this is set in modern day and Peter Pan, he is desperate to get back to Neverland, but the only way that he can get back to Neverland is through Claire because Claire has this skin condition where she has like dust, that golden dust that comes off of her body. Well, she says it's a skin condition, but we know what it is. It's magic. So <laughs> I feel like the reader, you know what it is. So, you know, she starts finding more out about this dust, magical dust on her body and like, you know, the whole journey of who she is kind of starts coming out and everything. And I love that part of it. Um, but the only way that Peter Pan can get back to Neverland is through her dust. Her powerful, like almost like pixie dust, like Tinkerbell type stuff. So, I love this story. Um, we had Tiger Lily in here. We had Peter Pan. We had other, like the Lost Boys and other characters like that. And honestly, I've never read Peter Pan. I do have it on my shelf right here. Isn't that cute? Love that. So maybe I'll read it someday, but I also don't remember a whole lot about Peter Pan growing up, except like the boy who never grew up kind of thing. So, um, but I really liked seeing the other characters from Neverland. That was great. The two perspectives between Peter Pan and Claire. I love their character. I'm not gonna spoil it or anything, but you just have a lot of like this back and forth if you don't know who's the bad guy. Like who, who's the, who, what happened to her brother? You know, you just have a lot of this back and forth and the ending. Y'all saw my vlog. If you see my vlog at the end, I got to the end of the last five pages and I didn't know, I did not expect the ending. So it really surprised me. I guess I'm not very good at, 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 at anticipating endings. Anyway, I never predict what's going to happen, but I was surprised and I really liked the ending. I can't wait for the next book. It did end on a cliffhanger, but a wrapped up cliffhanger, if that makes any sense. We do know what happens and they're on their next journey going forward. So I do plan on picking up the next book. I think it's called Shadow. I do have it on my audiobook, like I said, Audible Library, and I do plan to listen to it. The, the narrator is wonderful on this too, by the way. So if you want a great experience on audiobook, this one's great. So I gave that five stars. I won't gush about it anymore because the ending of this crazy plot twist, just great. I, like I said, go see my vlog. You'll see all my thoughts. Like my reading, in between reading, I finished it at like 10 o'clock on Sunday night or 11 o'clock on Sunday night. I was fired up. So, so the next book that I read was, I'll just have to put a picture here, but because I listened to it and I had luck on my library. I borrowed this from the library on audio and I borrowed it um, for the Kindle book. So I did go back and forth between both. So I'm really thankful I had that. But um, was If I'm Found. So that was If I Run Book 2. Uh, you know, the, the part I filmed on this earlier, I talked about If I Run Book 1. And so If, I, if I'm Found, Book 2 in that series was wonderful five stars that kept me on the edge of my seat. We just had more development of Casey and Dylan's journey of how they were trying to piece everything together. And so you start kind of piecing more of that puzzle together. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil it or anything. There was just a lot of um, details that you, and things you start finding out and you're so on your edge of your seat with that series. I love Terry Blackstock. I think she's wonderful. I do have another vlog. By the time you see this, there will be another weekend vlog where I finish the series. So check that out. I linked that up here too or below or whatever, but it was great. Um, 
five stars for book two. It was my favorite. I'm going to skip over the next book and talk about book three of this so I can kind of wrap that up. But I did finish the whole series. So that was If I Live, and I'll put that picture up here too. Um, and and it, the way it ended, I loved the whole series. I felt like there was a lot of great faith and just the journey of faith for Dylan and for um, Casey and just everything that they had going on together. And the, the ending with the mystery, I liked how that was wrapped up. I didn't love the romance and just like everything, the way that they kind of did that at the end was kind of like predictable. But, you know, it was it was nice. And I gave it 4.5 stars on this one for number three. But the whole series is a five star. This is my first Christian fiction mystery. I loved it. I will be picking up more Terry Blackstock. I've never really been a mystery person, but now I really am. I have a Christian fiction mystery. It's wonderful. So loved it. Pick up If I Run series if you haven't. Definitely highly recommend. If you're a mystery lover, you're going to love that. The next book I'll talk about that I read this month is The Lady of Galway Manor by Jennifer Dibble. I love Jennifer Dibble's books. I feel like she has such a beautiful way to write about Ireland and the people there. And just it, you're, you're transported there and you love the characters. Everything's great. So this is a Christian historical romantic fiction that is set in 1920. It follows two characters, Stephen and Lady Annabeth de Lacey. Now, Lady Annabeth, her dad, um, William de Lacey, is the new landlord of Galway Parish. And so he sends her to see Stephen, who is a jeweler at his family's jewelry shop. Jewelry shop. So the jewelry shop that Stephen works at has been in the family for seven generations and he is soon to, at the beginning of the book, you see that he's actually planning on leaving and taking a job somewhere else, but he, that plan is soon stopped because he has Annabeth show up at his door and become the new apprentice at, her, at the shop. So I love this whole premise. Everything kind of takes off from there, you know. Like, they, they start working together, a little romance kind of forms, like they kind of like each other. At first, I didn't know about Stephen, how I felt about him, but he does, he, he's had his heart broken. So, if you consider that he doesn't really believe in love anymore, he's had his heart broken, it's, you find out later why, but it was just a tragic thing for him and all of that. So, you know, at first, he's kind of just standoffish towards her. And any time that they got close, he would pull back because of that. So, um, but, you know, that's that's kind of his character. But I loved his father. Like, Seamus was just wonderful. His dad was just a sweet little bean. And I love that he really encouraged his son to make the right choices and to just rethink his choices. And was talked about faith and things like that. And he really loved Anna. And, and he was so positive, and I just really liked him. He was just like the perfect little dad, you know. I just love that. So, he was a favorite character of mine. Like I said, Lady Annabeth, she is there. She's used to, like, the titled life, very fancy, and just used to the finer things in life of sophistication and grace. And so, when she's there, it's like a new life for her. But she's a really great person, and she cares about the people there. But, however, she's not really well received by the people of Ireland there because there's so much political banter back and forth between war of, of Ireland and Britain. So, they're clashing together and she's just trying to kind of be in the middle of it because her father is such a political figure. And there's a lot of that banter back and forth. The people of Ireland don't really care for her there. They don't treat her very well. But, no matter what, she always would still help them. Her father doesn't really like the people of Ireland. He thinks that they steal and they cheat. And that they're just really wild people. But Anna soon realizes that's not the case. She really loves those people there. And so soon there is a relationship that kind of builds between Stephen and Anna. And they and everything kind of takes off from there, like I said. Um, you kind of wonder, will they, won't they kind of thing. Because there's a lot of that, like I said, political banner back and forth. My favorite part about this whole book is the Christian faith it was such a key point because she does these drawings and she makes this jewelry and there's a certain piece that she makes where she says something to the effect of Jesus's death on the cross was the ultimate sacrifice of love for us and that just really sets home with me and I really like that that is a main focal point that comes away from this story that we learned so um like I said five star read 
I definitely recommend Jennifer Dabble. In the future, she's going to be an auto buy author for me. Anything she writes, I will read. And it's just such a great story that I think you all should pick up. So far, so. and the final book that I read in March was Sisters in Arms by Kaya Alderson. So I do have a book of the month subscription and this is the one that I picked out last year in July. So this follows two young black women, Grace Steele and Eliza Jones in the early 1940s during the World War II period. Each of these women have their own powerful story. They, they joined the first all black women army, women's army corps, and also known as the Six Triple Eight. Grace is a talented pianist who dreams of going to Juilliard. And Eliza is a journalist for her father's business. So they join the army and everything kind of takes off from there. This story gives a lot of great background um, at the beginning of each woman's life and then the great introduction, you learn a lot about their families. So it had a great family dynamic at the beginning. Um, one of the girls was, didn't have the best relationship with their mom and the other one didn't have a great relationship with their dad. So it kind of gave both sides there. Um, I struggled with their relationship with these two ladies a little bit because they had a lot of constant bickering and I felt like, you know, they're calling it sisters in arms. They, they really didn't have a great relationship until the end of the book, about a hundred pages were left. So I felt like there was more opportunity for them to build on that relationship or that friendship, but to have more depth, but it was just still a great friendship nonetheless. And when we did get to that point, I did enjoy that. I loved learning more about that World War II time period. I really like historical fiction. There is some, what I would call, uh, wartime foul language. You all probably know kind of what I mean. If you've seen any kind of World War II um, movies or anything like that, so just be aware. It was a little bit more in the beginning, but you didn't have much of that at the end, so just wanted to mention that. Overall, I felt like this was a really great story about the World War II time period and about the first black women in the Army, Women's Army Corps. And this had some also important things that to talk about just about that time period where you can learn more about what the black women went through during that time period in the 1940s as well. So like their struggles and everything that they went through uh, in the South and just when they were traveling and different uh, experiences that they had. So it was really an important read as well for that. So I really appreciated this book for that. And I gave it three and a half stars. Great read. I'm glad I picked this one up from my book of the month. One of my goals this year is to get through my book of the month books. So I do recommend this if you like World War II stories and things like that. So, but those are all the books that I've read in March this month. I am still reading these two books, Charles Stanley's Courageous Faith, which is kind of like an autobiography for him. I've got like about that much through. And then I'm about this much through on my hundred and so pages on A Girl's Guide to the Outback. So I'm going to try to finish both of these this weekend so I can kind of go ahead and get started on my April books that I really want to get through in April. So I'm going to try to finish these this weekend. But yeah, um, hope you all had a great reading month. I'm excited for April and going to get through some different types of books and have a lot of fun reading and making different videos. So if there's a video that y'all think I should make, let me know in the comments below. I'm trying to think of different ideas too and whatnot. But my cat's over there playing with some toy. <laughs> Just ignore them. <laughs> oh my gosh, peanut! <laughs> when you're trying to film a video and it's like, what's happening? <laughs> anyway... Thank you all for watching. I hope y'all had a great reading month. Appreciate everyone's nice comments, feedback, subscribe, likes, all the good stuff. And I hope y'all are doing good. And I'll see y'all soon. Bye.